Hey yo, Potatomobile here. In this video, I will be going over some basic tips on how to make your own object assets. Now, if you're watching this video, you might either be a beginner and are wanting to make good assets, or you're already an expert and are working on colors. Either way, this video is for you. So, let's get started. The first type of assets we're going to be looking at are spheres, or circles, whatever way you want to put it. We're going to be going over the rubber type, the plastic type, the metal type, the coin type, and the orb type. We're going to be starting on the rubber type, so let's get straight into it. The first thing you need to do is find a base for your asset, like a rubber ball, or some other rubber ball image saved on your desktop, I don't care. The next thing you need to do is create an outline and fill it in. Then, use the circle tool to make the shading with a darker version of the original color. Remember not to add a shade of black to the color, please. That just makes it look disgusting. Instead, use hue shifting. For example, when shading a red object, make it more pink, then darken it. I'll go over the other colors later. Once you've shaded your circle, you're done with the rubber type of ball. Now, we're gonna be moving over to the plastics. Since I don't want to create a new asset, I'm basically just gonna use the rubber one and then just add some lighting. Like this! Now it's time to move over to the metals. Since metals are shinier than plastics, you're gonna have to make your lighting a bit lighter. Then for the shading, you take your eraser tool and you make a circle around the shading, causing it to turn into a crescent, and that's exactly what you want. For you flip clip users, it should be easy, but for anyone who uses Krita, which is not a lot of you, uh, you're gonna have to fill in the shading in order to not have that gradient-y look. And now we're done with all the sphere assets. Now, it's time to move over to the coin type. Make your outline and fill it in like usual, BUT you don't fill it in just yet. You make another outline on a lower layer, erase the bits of the lower outline to show over the front, fill in the front shape, fill in the back shape, add some lighting here, and if you want, that's pretty much it. But if you only like the outline around the shape itself, then you erase a bit of the front outline and then fill it in with the shading bit, like the, the, bit, the bit on the back. And that should be pretty much it, unless you want to make it a coin. Then you add some lighting gear, like that, if you just want it to be a disc, or you add some lighting gear like that, if you want it to be a coin. Now onto the orbs. I mean, you could call them the glass assets, but I just prefer orbs because why not? You pretty much just do the same thing as you did before, but except make it more glassy. Also, please make the shading an oval, and you're done with the spheres. For the squares, you should probably just get some inspiration from Blocky's asset. Anyways, back to hue shifting. If you're making an asset that's not red, you're gonna have to listen to this section of the video. Anyways, let's get started. If you have a white part in an asset, don't shade it with just gray. Add a little bit of blue to the shading. Use Sonic Shoes Acid for an example. See how it's a little bit green? I prefer blue, but you can use green if you want, or any other color. I don't mind as long as it works best for you. If you have colors like blue, don't shade it with a darker shade of the color. Go back or forward on the color wheel. The purpley blue is a difficult one. It's the only shade of blue that you can just darken a little bit. But you also need to twist it back. For orange, twist it back to a red orange and then darken it. For yellow, just twist it back. For green, twist it forward and then darken a little. For purple, twist it back and then darken it. For pink, twist it back. For white or gray, like I just said, shade it with just a little bit of blue to the asset. Clouds are darkening it at the same time. Now for black, black is a peculiar one. I don't actually just use pure black. That makes it immune to shading. Or it's just, just shading, yeah, lighting. Yeah, you, get. you use a very dark gray while using the blue rule with the what gray and white. And then, you, you can just darken it a little, and then use black for the outline. And that's pretty much it for hue shifting. Now, to move on to some basic tips and tricks that everyone gets wrong. Well, not everyone, but most people. Rule number one. Please do not use lighting in every single asset. It looks different from the material that you're, it's intended to be. Rule number two. If you do have lighting and shading in an asset, don't just use curves. You may think it's realistic, but not all assets are supposed to be realistic. This is optional, but if you're making a cubic asset, don't put outlines for each square. I don't actually like to do this because... Re reasons. One last thing, make sure that your assets are at least of decent quality. I mean, don't come crying to me when you make an asset 144p, and that should be pretty much it. I have now lent to you some of my skills of making uh, pretty good assets to you so that you can make your own good assets now i can't wait to see what you guys do with this video what assets you make with these tips in mind and if you're in the discord server you know exactly where to post them anyways see you later 